Okay, good morning. My name is Mark Arndt uh, from Amy. I'm the operating company representative responsible for the Forth Road Bridge. I'm just going to give a brief overview of what we've done today and the forthcoming programme of works to get the bridge back open to full traffic and HGVs. Uh, many people will have seen this model before. This is a model representation of the Forth Road Bridge itself. You can see the simple vertical towers, the main cables, the hangars that people are familiar with that continue along the bridge, and indeed the, the bridge truss deck itself, which moves back and forward in the uh, resonance to the wind, the traffic and temperature. At the end, these are the existing truss end links, and the, the failed member has been coloured uh, orange here. These replicate the effect of a cable at the end of the bridge, which most people will be familiar with. By way of an update on what's happened over the course of December and where we are right now in terms of the overall programme, obviously the teams have put these splint repairs on all eight uh, truss end link locations. That's allowed us to also install the structural health monitoring system that is now in place at all eight areas. Uh, we undertook some controlled load testing activities using gritting vehicles and heavy goods vehicles positioned at discrete points on the bridge and uh, running concurrently with live traffic. That allowed the engineering teams to measure in real time the stresses and strains present in each of the truss end links. The data from that was then used to determine the level of rotation that was present in the pins. Now obviously the bridge deck moves back and forward as I said in terms of wind, temperature and traffic. The design or the articulation of the bridge relies on a degree of rotation at the bottom pin obviously. The truss end link at the northeast main span, that's the one that we know about, there's obviously the, the, the failed member. Um, the strain gauges that were installed next in the adjacent tower leg uh, to measure the stresses and strains in the main span on the northwest link. Uh, those results became available around about mid-January and they illustrated that the pin down at this location was articulating very well and indeed how you would expect it to do in terms of its original design. So that gave us a bit of confidence in terms of uh, the overall bridge. We also measured the stresses and strains in all of the side span members, so the four side spans, they were found not to be critical, so again gave us an increase in confidence in, in the bridge's carrying capacity. The next activity was to similarly um, introduce the structural health monitoring system to the south tower. So likewise the side spans articulating fine uh, are, were not critical. The two main span uh, truss end links at the southwest and the southeast, however, illustrated a degree of fixity similar to the pin uh, at the northeast link. What that meant was that um, the controlled load testing that we did has validated the reasons why the bridge was indeed only open to cars and vehicles under 7.5 tonnes. The team are continuing to work hard in terms of reopening the bridge to full HGV traffic. Uh, as it was pre-December. So in that respect we've de been developing what's called the Phase 2 works. Now Phase 1 was splint introduction. Phase 2 is essentially the additional brackets and strand jacks that will be present on the bridge. We're concentrating on the, the main span locations and indeed the three areas where the pin at the bottom isn't articulating as we'd have hoped. Um, so once this is installed, we will then jack the bridge up at these locations to relieve the loading effect uh, from the traffic. The introduction of this is very similar to introducing another hanger, if you like, suspended off the cable, albeit rather than extending at full height, it will be extended onto these brackets. These brackets are positioned above the carriageway level, it's uh, at this kind of level, and there's also a spreader beam positioned below the top cord um, to carry the top end of the truss. These are very specialist cables and um, sockets that are being manufactured by a specialist company at the moment. Um, we've started to take delivery of these now, so we're still on programme to complete this repair by mid-February as we set out previously. Okay, moving on to the South Tower now. Um, as I said, around about the end of January we were able to ascertain using controlled load tests that the pins on the main spans illustrated a degree of fixity similar to the northwest span. 
However, the team were proactive, if you like, in the, the intervening period, and all of the steel work associated with this new bracket and the componentry system was placed because it's almost an identical design at each of the three areas. That steel work is now beginning to be delivered to site um, and the fabricator's workshop. However, as you've maybe seen before, there are different uh, scaffolding arrangements and there's little unique uh, idiosyncrasies on the bridge itself. At the northeast tower, there was a tower scaffolding built up from the ground. At each of the other locations, we had what's called a hanging scaffolding system that basically hangs off the truss itself. That allowed us to get the phase one splints done very quickly, or quicker than you would do building up from the pier defences themselves and going the full 50 metres. However, in the short term, it means that that hanging scaffolding at, at the south tower is in the way of this new bracket system. So at present, the teams are relocating that scaffolding system and moving some of the existing services out the way so that this bracket system can be installed at the south tower as well. All of this work is getting undertaken using overnight contraflow arrangements, so they will be in place over the, the coming weeks. Um, but as I say, they will be on place overnight um, to mitigate any traffic impact. Once the work uh, to move the scaffolding is uh, uh, completed and services diverted, that we expect that to happen over the course of the next seven to ten days at all locations. Uh, we will be progressing with installing these works. Wherever possible, we'll use similar contraflow arrangements, so when we're working on the southbound carriageway at uh, the northeast link, there will be teams concurrently working on the southern tower at the um, southeast tower as well. Um, once that works complete, the teams will move on to the southwest tower, which will have a similar but opposite contraflow arrangement, and by that way and working in tandem, we will minimise the programme as far as we can. Just on the overall programme for this, we're on track to complete this one on the middle of February, like we said we would. And I guess that, that's despite a lot of the storms that have been coming in over recent weeks, such as Eva, uh, Gertrude and Henry. And those works really do directly impact um, progress, because all of this work is weather, well, very weather dependent. Sorry. Not simply just working at height, but you work in mobile elevated platforms above the carriageway so they are susceptible to wind, but some of the simple things like actually putting cones on the road, if wind gusts get up the cones get blown around, so this phase two work is probably more weather susceptible than phase one because we're not working in a closed bridge environment and we still have to cater for traffic movement through the contraflow. But as I said, this one's on the programme still to finish uh, mid-February. We'll do the South East Tower first because we have the same contraflow arrangement and that's programmed to finish by late February and the third and the final one is mid-March completion on the South West Tower. That will then allow the bridge to be open to full unrestricted um, traffic loading. We do understand the impact it will have on the heavy good vehicle industry and on that basis we have looked to introduce a phased um, introduction of uh, HGVs back onto the bridge. Um, again, we've tested this on site and we've looked at how it will work. We've developed uh, traffic simulation models, a big exercise in controlled traffic management scenarios. Um, and we do, uh, or we will be introducing a phased reintroduction to HGVs onto the bridge from this week. That system or system will operate between 11 at night and 4 in the morning. Um, it will allow pulsed vehicles or HGV vehicles to be released onto the bridge at 30 second intervals. We will have a number of control measures there, such as recovery vehicles positioned on the bridge, spotters on the bridge to report any um, discrepancies in the 30 second pulses, and obviously to react to any breakdowns that happen on the bridge at that time. That system will allow around about 600 HGVs to cross the bridge each night within that 11 o'clock till 4 in the morning window. Once this is in place, that will then allow, as I said, the bridge to be jacked up, relieving the road load or the traffic loads from the truss end link. That means that we can then replace the truss end links themselves with a newer, more modern component to do a similar arrangement, release the loads from this. Uh, semi-permanent uh, articulation arrangement to allow the bridge to be uh, reopened to full HGV traffic. 
However, once this phase two, this bracket and these cables are in place, the bridge will be able to be open to full HGV traffic.